I've got a very powerful guest for you today. And some of you may be familiar with her. Her name is Ashley Delello. She has been on So You Think You Can Dance, Dancing with the Stars, the Ellen DeGeneres Show, featured on all the major publications and news media outlets. She is so incredible. Um, so what Ashley does now, she's going to explain to you on the episode and what a journey she has been on. <laughs> <laughs> to hell and back, like close to death and back and just has discovered so many powerful modalities for healing along her way. And that is what she is doing now. So she's the founder and creator of bio-emotional healing. It's a revolutionary method based in neuroscience that helps her clients around the world finally break free from emotional trauma, limiting beliefs, anxiety, and chronic pain to thrive in their lives. So despite being told by doctors that she wouldn't live past her teenage years, that was the first big run that she had. And she's going to go into that she refused to give up and discovered the secret to rewiring the mind-body connection. Really powerful stuff. I can't wait for you to hear her story and her experience. Um, she became an elite athlete, TV and Broadway star, entrepreneur, mind coach, and motivational speaker. She is just like, she's one of those people that's like a radiant ball of joy and a powerhouse at the same time. I know you guys are going to love her. So let's go ahead and dive in. Here is Ashley DeLello. Okay, Ashley, you have been on quite the adventure in your life. <laughs> just just a little bit, just I a mean, little bit. Let's, you know, it, it, maybe some of the listeners know you from, you know, you've been you've been on Ellen, you dancing with the stars. Were, were you in uh so you think you can dance? Did yeah. I see that? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so you did this like really awesome Hollywood dancing going all over the world. Like, can you start us back though in childhood and your teenage years and that part of your journey? Absolutely. And then people are always like, wait, dancer, what do you do with the brain now? And obviously <laughs> that's a, a huge part of the story because there's yeah. I've had two kind of life altering health experiences. Um, but my first one was at 13. I, I wanted to dance as soon as I could walk, um, which was such a blessing because it was such a drive in my life um, mm. to do it, to succeed in it. And I see that as such a gift, even though it was taken from me, which felt like the most immense loss and so much of who I was, but but also a gift in that it drove me to really defy the odds. And, and that's what right. I had to do. So overnight I went from dancing five hours a day, the epitome of health. I'm 13 years old, you know, carefree life. So passionate about dance and, you know, the promise of my future. And then overnight I'm fighting for my life and no warning sign. So, That's so crazy, such a huge disruptor, um, right. to you as a person, but also your, your brain and nervous system that is like, what just happened to my reality? How can this be my life? I'm went all over the country, had every test scan that existed at the time, which back then it was 26 years ago. So everything we understand today and what you teach about even with functional health and all these biohacking, none of that existed, right? It was right. anything outside of traditional testing was like voodoo, some lady in dreadlocks. Yeah, if it existed, you know? it was if not it accessible. Yeah, totally. and it was weird. It was, it was so weird. weird. Yeah, and I came from a medical family. So it was like, that was right. just voodoo oh, stuff. Right. Um, but ultimately I, I ended up there because I went all over the country, mm. top hospitals tested for anything and everything that existed at the time, um, for over two and a half years. And wow. I, I was told I needed to accept. I wasn't going to live past my teenage years. Um, the best they could tell me I had a rare viral infection. They couldn't diagnose, couldn't treat. My body was wow. shutting down, lost most of my hair, got so wow. sick and weak. I could hardly lift a finger skin was yellow from my liver failing. I mean, oh, I, I man. definitely can tell you, I know what it feels like to be dying. And, um, that was really the beginning of my work because I know what it's also like to literally will my body to live by my mind alone. In fact, there were nights I wouldn't even go to sleep because I, wow. I really was afraid if I surrendered that conscious will, my body was so sick. It just would have and completely understandable just said enough, you know? Wow. So in that, that also did a number on my nervous system, as you can imagine. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I can't let this down. No. Yeah. yeah. And, and pretty validated in living right. in fight or flight. Cause I right. did 
for over four years fighting between life and death. And obviously that's a huge story in of itself, but it was a journey and uh, defied the odds and, and definitely brought me, started um, my work in the mind, but also in understanding how incredible our body is yeah. and how its innate intelligence was to heal. And out of desperation, even back then, we started to really look at food and how do I support my immune system to fight this virus with everything that it can and its whole capacity? How can I supplement and support it and nourish it? And again, this is also streamlined mainstream today, but back then it was it was not at all. So we really had to mm -hmm. seek people that um, were, were doing this and we didn't have podcasts. We didn't have this age of information with YouTube right. and social media. So it was, it was quite a search um, <laughs> yeah. to figure out how to support my body to, to heal, to fight something that was never even clearly diagnosed. And I think that's important mm -hmm. because wow. people often we've been conditioned to think, unless I know exactly what it is, I have a clear diagnosis, then I can't heal. And we put these mm. barriers around what's possible unless we feel we can pinpoint something exactly. Yeah. That's a great point because like there's often been times like some lab testing can be helpful, right? It's like, oh my Absolutely. gosh, I had no yeah. idea that I had no magnesium or something, you know, it can be helpful, but like the body is, it's, it's such a holistic system. And we're going to get into your stuff with like emotionally, like the I definitely am a believer that like the physical is a manifestation of what's happening spiritually also. And, but also the, the physical also affects the spiritual. It's like this two way street like this all the time. But like, oftentimes, like, you know, sometimes clients will be like, I can't afford to get those tests. And I'm like, well, we'll just do all of the things that build overall health, sleep, circadian rhythm, sunlight, nutri nutrient dense food, like, you know? <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I love that you share that. Like you never found out, huh? Like you still don't have that clarity. Still don't I have that, that clarity. Right. And here I am. I've, I've survived. I'm doing great. Um, you know, wow. I never had my illness come back. Um, my second <laughs> life altering health journey was, a total different thing. But what was connected was the impact that it had had on my brain and nervous system at a deep subconscious level mm -hmm. that I didn't know. I didn't understand because I, I survived my illness and then I was ready to live. You know, I yeah. took me six years to go back to dance, but I went back, you know, I, I went to school. Wow. Yeah. Six years, which is another miracle that we can connect to what I was doing with the brain in a way I had no idea but, you know, I wanted to seize life. I was like a mm -hmm. second chance at life, defied the odds. Mm -hmm. So I, I did that. And I had a lot of injuries through my professional career, um, which I think also was because of what was running in my nervous system, just that stress response at yeah. a subconscious level that just right. heightened the impact of, you know, really what I was doing to my body, which any professional athlete, it's, it's a certain level of abuse, right. Yeah. <laughs> to, to be at that level. And when we were on, sure. so you think you can dance, we were dancing up to 10 to 12 hours a day oh, by the finale, nice. um, which you just can't even support your body enough to recover <laughs> from the breakdown. Right. We had, my nails were like peeling back and we had to get vitamin B injections because wow. we were just so depleted. Right. Wow. Um, it was, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. There's so much they don't show on TV. Right. Um, uh, but it was, the and you know what you're, you're, you're hitting such a great point that I think that can apply to a lot of people, even though they haven't been on. So you think you can dance dancing 10 to 12 hours a day. Like, um, it's like sometimes in order to achieve greatness, in order to create something incredibly big, it demands a lot. Right. And so this can happen in people, they're starting a business or Absolutely. they're like starting a family or they're, you know, maybe doing some really amazing creative project. They're making a movie or, you know, something big. It, that it takes an insurmountable amount of in, energy. And sometimes like in the midst of it, I found it's like, you're, you can, I mean, it's good to have your practices, meditate, like ground, get your sunlight, like do all the things, eat well, exercise, like, you know, take a day off. Like, 
but still like, it's like, there's so much recovery needed sometimes it's like, okay, well now we're going to have to come back and nurture a whole bunch of that stuff. But you like, I'm curious on this. Cause like, obviously like almost dying and like being so afraid as a teenager that if you fall asleep, you'll die mm -hmm. like that. I can't even, it breaks my heart. Like that is like such a raw, like, Oh my gosh. Like imagining actually being in that place, like the level of like nervous system overdrive, not to mention whatever happened to you probably was like, you know, mm -hmm. kind of a threat. Your nervous system got the memo of like threat, you know? So it's just like emotional, physical, all of that. Like when you, cause well, I guess we'll kind of segue into your next big crazy thing that happened, but like, did you have like deep therapeutic uh, emotional nervous system releasing things that happened or was it mostly just health practices? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. No, like I said, even uh, there wasn't a lot of that really right. made available. I do remember. Right. I found one practitioner and she was kind of the first one that even touched on that type of impact, right? Because I was in mm -hmm. full survival. I was fighting right. every day and, and, and I was right. That was right. the truth literally. of my experience, literally, yes. <laughs> literally and fighting my own beliefs. Cause every expert, you know, told me I wasn't going to make it. They even sent a psychologist in to talk to me, wow. telling, telling me I was living in denial of my oh reality. My right. Right. I'm <laughs> I'm, I think I was maybe I was 13 or 14 at that time. Can you imagine now when you, when you think of that and, and I'm here and all the experts, you know, in their white coats and I'm a 13 year old girl and I telling me like, you need to accept you're dying. You're not living in, in the reality. And I remember looking oh, at the no. psychologist and, you know, not to no fault of her own, but I remember saying, listen, no one knows I'm dying more than me. Like I can feel it. I feel it every moment of every day. But I also feel deep down inside, if I just accept I'm dying, then any chance of survival is off the right. table. Right. right. So that's what I'm not willing to do because whether I die or not, I'm sure as hell going to go out fighting with yeah. every piece of I that I have, because I'm 13 years old. I'm not, I'm not 80. I'm not 85. Right. Where I've lived this life. Like I'm 13. And deep down inside, I feel like there's more for me. I was created to experience more than these 13 years of life that I've had. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, like I, you know, it's funny. I just wrote an Instagram post about this this morning, um, about like acceptance, acceptance serves a place, but in terms of like chronic emotional pain, or like there's some part of your life that is just a disaster. Like it is bringing you so much pain or your body or, um, emotional trauma, just stuff that isn't being worked out. Like to me, acceptance is a place where you go when you really don't have any hope. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's a helpful place to be in. And that's like, basically they were basically saying to you, like, you have no hope. So just mm -hmm. go in acceptance. And you were like, no, I have hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And how amazing uh, as a 13 year old, because you're right. That's very intimidating, but I'm like, wow, they're actually like literally like almost like knowing what we know about the subconscious mind now, which we'll get into because that's your yeah. work that you do now, but it's like, they were literally like killing you kind of like, which, <laughs> yeah, it ticks me off. Right. Not just for me. And, and again, I've I experienced kind of a similar thing over and over again in my second life altering health experience. And that was like, it's not just me for me that makes me upset because I'm, I'm not a person and never have been that just takes it as truth, but how many people do, I mean, cause we are, we're not the expert, you know, and, and we're supposed right. to trust their expertise. And again, I respect it. Absolutely. I, I, I know it's no easy task to become a doctor, a surgeon or any yeah. type of practitioner, but like you don't get to have the final say. And how many people then walk out of whatever appointment that is and they lose that hope because they've been told right. this is what's possible. These are the parameters. And it's like, I absolutely knew I was facing what seemed impossible, but yeah. every day I just had to lean in and condition to believe there was possibility. Right. Yeah. Even you're like. <laughs> when there really didn't seem like there was much. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'd, I would definitely rather 
be disappointed in that final second when it's like, okay, well, I try. That's okay. I'll go into acceptance then. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Until yeah. then. <laughs> exactly. I'm, and uh, I, to your point of acceptance, and then we'll get into those other pieces. I think it's really important to make that differentiation. Like you can accept the season you're in, meaning yeah. I'm not going to live in denial that like I'm, my body is shutting down. Right. right? Like uh, there's an acceptance around. Right. I am in the fight of my life. I've lost dancing. I've lost my teenage years. I have to grow up overnight, right? I've got literally what felt like my life um, completely in my hands, but that's different than accepting this has happened and now this is what the outcome must be. Yes, exactly. I, I, I believe acceptance is the first step. It's like a crucial step. It's yeah. I think that's what AA teaches, isn't it? Like yeah. accept, accepting the situation and then love comes in. I call it mom love. It's like real love. It's like, okay, like, yes, I accept that. But like, let's, let's nurture that as much as we possibly can, you know, like give it some love, give it some love. Cause that when it's in the, in the energy of love, it's, it's self honoring, right? Like you're there, you're with yourself through that process, you know? And I hear so much of that already just through the little nuances. Let's talk about the second, the second okay. one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and with what you just said, I, I think I, I didn't really do that in my, the first part of my illness. I just fought And I felt like hell. Right. And it was like pure fight. And in that I was really, you know, for good reason, hardwiring my brain and nervous system to live in survival. So I didn't know really that had it shut off. Right. Because it, it, I was only 13. So I was still so young. Your brain and nervous system are, are still really creating, you know, how they think they need to run to survive. And mine just again, got hardwired. So fast forward, right. Top of the mountain. We had an amazing career. Um, I shared it with my husband and professional partner and it was just, it was amazing. And I had so much joy. And I remember even just times on that stage, just crying and, and the, Mm -hmm. because of just the miracle of it all. And I cherished it. And then we went and headlined a Broadway show and we're doing eight intense shows a week, which just, was so miraculous. And yes, I had injuries as every professional athlete does. And Mm -hmm. I, I had a hip surgery, had to relearn to walk again, but came back to my career eight months later. That was my right hip. Well, then, um, had my daughter, you had to wait a little while in order to have children and then had my daughter and then still doing our professional career. She's coming with us. And, then my left hip starts to have all the same symptomology. And I had tried everything with my right hip for almost two years to avoid surgery. Um, where it was barely walking by then. So I knew I've got to take care of my left mm-hmm. hip, right? My right hip was doing great. So of course I expect that same experience mm-hmm. was not in any way, shape or form. Um, as soon as I tried to start walking after the left, left hip surgery, I just knew this is not right. And plus I'd, I'd already gone through that recovery and it just wasn't right. And when I started to try to put weight on that hip, just a nightmare, um, pain cascaded through my whole body. It was like deja vu of when I was younger, but now it was pain. It was nerve pain. Mm. It was dysfunction. I could not, not only walk, I could barely hold a book. I of course now had pain in like 12 areas of my body, which then means I'm not sleeping, which means my body's in so much stress, which means I have health challenges now coming in. Right. Mm. And I could feel just like my nervous system going into overdrive Mm. and I'm going to see any pain specialist or like anyone, but this time I'm going to all the holistic functional regenerative Mm. I'm having over 200 injections of stem cell, PRP, prolotherapy. Like I'm doing all the nutrition. I'm doing all the supplementation. I'm doing the healing work. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going at it and I'm doing this for over two and a half years and I'm not getting better. And I'm being told again, well, my nervous system flipped a switch. It flipped a switch into pain. And I'm, I'm told this can happen sometimes. So what am I told again? you're a chronic pain patient now. (laughs) I'm diagnosed with fibromyalgia, chronic regional pain syndrome, interstitial cystitis, which is a bladder pelvic pain that just is 
hell. And I've lost my professional career. I've lost my ability to even go to the grocery store by myself. My daughter's oh my two when this happens, oh my gosh. I can't pick her up. I can't take care of her, you know, and, and she was a miracle. I was also told I'd never have kids. So it just was like, what has happened to my life oh, again? Yeah. But worse this time, cause I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a business owner. I can't take care of my family. I can't show up. And, and that was so much harder than being a 13, 14, 15 year old girl who had a mother who also could take care of me. And I didn't have all these responsibilities. Right. Right. right? And it's like, gosh, and so I'm doing all the things and I'm, I'm not getting better. And I remember one night I was just literally at my wits end. And here I'm a person who has, who fought to defy Mm -hmm. the odds. And I'm just sitting there one night, pain just robs you of everything and including sleep. And I didn't slept for maybe more than three hours for two and a half, three months. And Mm -hmm. I just remember thinking, what kind of life is this? Not just for me, but my family. We were close to losing our home because we were spending everything trying to get me better. And I just really hit a point of like, there's nothing left to try. Wow. And it was probably the scariest moment of my life. Um, maybe second to, you know, being so afraid to die or, or right alongside it. Because also the, the thought of living the rest of your life in that type of right. torture that's not something that gives you any type of excitement, right. To keep going. And then you're watching your loved ones go through it. And like my daughter, I have to constantly be like, don't jump on mommy. Remember, you know, and I'm like so fragile. Cause if you bumped me, I had nerve pain shooting through my body. It was just, it was my most broken point, but it was where everything changed because I thought if I can't find the answer outside of me, I have to create it. Like I have to create it. And if my nervous system flipped a switch into pain, well, then I'm going to figure out how to flip it back out. Nice. And that was the moment where I just, I dove deep. I dove deep into the brain and the mind body connection and pain science, which really gave me such an intricate understanding of the protective mechanisms in the brain and piece by piece which is so cool because two new medical studies just came out that verify what I've been doing for over four years it, with uh, my wow. work by emotional healing. And then I just realized, yeah, you're not only do pain pathways get hardwired into pain, but any stress response. And that's why it's applicable. Even mm. if it's not pain, if it's anxiety, if it's depression, if it's mm. limiting beliefs of trauma, but our brains have a data bank of everything we've ever experienced And it takes all that information into account and how to protect us. So did I have a failed hip surgery? Absolutely. The surgeon left a hole in my hip, which that's another story took three years to figure out, but the way my body reacted to that surgery was because of all its memory of what Mm. I'd gone through before. Mm. And so absolutely something was wrong, but it just overreacted to the point of where it just, like I said, went into that overdrive of survival and pain is a protective mechanism built into the brain. So my brain's on survival. It's trying to protect me. And in that it is sending pain throughout my whole body. And in understanding that and understanding all the pieces of that trauma I had gone through, realizing I'd literally been carrying PTSD, not yeah. consciously really, but, right. but also in a way I did know that, right. Cause I'd walk into a hospital and I'd have all these feelings come into my system that I'd kind of ignore. Cause I'm a fighter. Right. right. So it's like, right. so strong, you know, don't have yeah. time for this. You know what right. I mean? Like I'm alive, you know? And yeah. so really having to admit, oh my gosh, that my illness impacted me far more deeply than I realized. Mm. And if I want to heal my pain today, not only do I have to rewire pain pathways and its impact on my life the last several years, I got to go back and heal what happened to my brain and nervous system from my illness. Wow. What do you mean by rewiring pain pathways? Yeah. So pain, right, is a protective mechanism. It's one of the main ways the brain communicates danger. So I think all of us grow up because pain is awful. It's that Mm -hmm. it's like a punishment, right? Mm -hmm. Some type of punishment, something's wrong with the body. We've got to fix it. 
but pain is the brain's number one way to protect us because it gets our attention. Right. Right. And so, yes, it, it very often can point to something being wrong in the body, but also Mm -hmm. dependent upon all these other factors, somebody's experiences in their life and our own biodiversity and maybe weaker points in our body because of our genetics, because of injuries, just because of all of those things, pain is one of the main ways the brain says something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong. And what we know from brain scans is the brain perceives physical threats almost identically as emotional threats. So even if something's emotionally wrong, stressing you out, traumatic, you're holding on to it, your brain can communicate to you to deal with that through pain. Mm. Okay. So we now understand that pain is one of the only pain, something being wrong in the body is only one factor in why the brain creates pain. So those pain pathways, what happens is the more it's like any neural pathways we talk about, right? The more that it's repeated, the Mm -hmm. more hardwired it becomes. Mm -hmm. It becomes that default pathway the brain wants to go back to, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like if you were in winter now and um, you think of sledding, right? Once somebody sled down a certain path, you want to keep going down that same path because it's predictable. You're not going to hit a rock. It goes faster. It's smoother. It's Mm -hmm. easier. You don't have Mm -hmm. to fight through it. The brain's the same way. So any neural pathway, a thought, emotion, a behavior, pain, the longer it's there, the more the brain wants to default to it as a way to communicate to you. And with pain, what's so hard and why we can see pain is a more chronic issue worldwide than even cancer or diabetes. It is the most misunderstood. It's the most inability because it's so complex. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we have these diagnoses that just make us feel like, well, this is what I have, but we really are just beginning to understand. So those pain receptors, the longer they run, not only do they become habitual, but they, the pain receptors in the brain, they get more hypersensitive and hypervigilant, which is mean, means it comes faster, easier, it lasts longer, and the pain receptors get less specific, which is why the pain spreads, mm. right? No one even talks about this, which is crazy because yeah, I'm trying to find solutions and I'm not understanding that this literally has changed the pain receptors in my brain. And I have to literally change their hypervigilance, hypersensitivity so that it stops believing the only way to communicate danger to me is through pain. So I'm curious, like when you, you know, had that moment, that low, low, when you were like, okay, I'm going to have to like, I'm going to have to do this. And, you know, you started to recognize, I think my nervous system's on overdrive. I think I've been living in to complete and total survival mode. Like what did that what did that journey look like for you and how long did it, like, did you have to go into like deep therapy type practices to process like the stories that you created about life, you know, as a teenager, like what, where did you start on that journey? Mm -hmm. And then like, what really made the difference and how long did that take you? Yeah. So I'll be totally honest. I was ticked at first, <laughs> right? Cause I, I was like, wait, wait, I've survived so much, mm-hmm. but that's not enough. Now I got to go back and change the impact of that on yeah. my system. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, I've been living through hell also the last several years, but now I got to change my pain receptors in my brain. <laughs> like what, you know, how much can you ask of someone? So I, I had this moment of like, are you kidding me? But then yeah. that turned to absolute empowerment because it meant I could do something yeah. and I wasn't helpless or just dependent upon True. someone else. I had this power in myself. So Man, I deep dive. The journey looked like from the brain perspective. Thankfully, we live in uh, a day of age of information. So I'm searching and I'm, and I'm a nerd. So I'm reading journals Mm -hmm. and pain science journals, and I'm seeking out neuroscientists and pain neuroscientists, and I'm studying and I'm listening. And it just became this fuel because my, my life depended upon it. Right. And I'm, yeah, you had hope again books. Yeah. And I'm like, our brains are powerful. Like I know that. And I'm starting to see this connection to literally how my brain helped save my life way back during my illness. And then I'm like, well, then I can do this too. And Mm -hmm. so 
the self-study with the brain was, was, was just self-study literally three, four hours a day. I'd wake up in the middle of the night in pain and I would use that to study. Mm, and I, I would be that. like, I'm awake. It, the world is quiet. Mm. So instead of laying here and surviving, I'm, I'm going to I love that. study, you know, yeah. and that's the gift. We really have no excuse in this day and age of learning knowledge. It's just putting it to work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was that aspect. And then, yeah, I'm seeking people and practitioners. What does it look like to process some deeply held protective emotions, right? right? Because your system's not super excited to let go what it thinks is keeping you safe. Right. 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 And it's pretty justified right? in everybody's life because it's come through um, experiences that were incredibly hard, very traumatic. And the, the more emotionally charged anything is, the more the brain takes a snapshot of that and embosses that pattern neurologically so that it thinks by remembering it, by holding on to it, right. it's going to keep you from experiencing it again. It's like, it's like somebody's coming at you with a knife straight towards your heart and you've got like a shield and being like, okay, put the shield down. Okay. Put it down. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And no, exactly. Right. And it was interesting because it was actually one of uh, the massage therapists I worked with. And I, cause I was so picky, right. My body was just uh, like, you had to touch it just right. But I remember one time he looked at me he's like, he said, Ashley, what happens if you stop fighting? Right. And I just felt this intelligence inside say, then we're going to die. Right. And I just remember that moment being like having such compassion for my brain and nervous system and my body, because Mm. I've been through a whole spectrum, right? My body's been my greatest adversity uh, in my life. Right. And so Mm. I definitely went through a journey of seeing it as an enemy to then being my greatest friend and my ally. But in that I really saw, wow, our systems are so built to protect us Mm. and it, it really fights so hard to do that. And that often comes out in stress responses that hurt us, that hold us prisoner to our experiences, but really at the root of it is protection from Mm -hmm. this place of wanting us to survive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's such a huge fundamental shift that opens Mm -hmm. up the pathway of any type of healing. Cause if we can't have compassion for this protective nervous system, then we'll keep fighting it and it, it will win. It, it will win. It will fight back harder. Right. And we'll, yeah. we'll stay in this internal battle. So that was just one of those moments of really seeing how deeply embedded and validated my system was of being like, I'm not turning off these alarm bells. We're going to keep living in fight or flight, looking for every potential threat and everything we feel in our body. We're going to react as if that could kill us. Right. Mm -hmm. Because Mm -hmm. remember what we went through Mm -hmm. and now what we're going through. And that's what the brain does is Mm -hmm. it perpetuates similar experiences, but it uses those experiences to validate the beliefs from the old one. Right. And so that's why Mm -hmm. we just keep living Mm -hmm. experiences over and over again, that might be different, but they all come back to the same root. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's when I realized, okay, I got to create a process based in neuroscience that really takes down the brain's alarm bells, whether that's in pain or anxiety or depression. That's it it took my work to realizing it's all the same. It's a stress response. And I got to understand how you do that. But Mm -hmm. then the brain and the body are in a constant feedback loop with each other. So you Mm -hmm. can't just address the brain and leave the body. And we all know emotions are stored in the body. So we can address the brain, but if we're not addressing the unresolved emotions, unexpressed emotions, then we're going to stay anchored to those experiences, to Mm -hmm. those beliefs. And so that's why I call it bioemotional healing because it's absolutely based in neuroscience, but it takes into account the body and emotions and you Mm. have to heal them together for your system to truly let go of those old stress responses and the beliefs attached to them and be even open to rewiring a new belief, rewiring a new pattern, a new way of living. And that's what's so important because we talk about rewiring but if your system doesn't feel safe enough mm-hmm. to let go of the old program, 
it's not going to let in something new, maybe temporarily, yeah. but then you're going to have an experience in life. Like we all know right. that triggers and your system's going to go, see, I'm coming right back here. Right. Yeah. It's like maybe you with the whole shield analogy, it's like you drop it for a second and the person was like, I was just kidding. But then the yeah. next time, cause this happens all the time, but the next time somebody comes at you with a knife, like you think you're not going to pull the shield back up, Absolutely. you're going to pull the shield back up. <laughs> yeah. And that's where I was like, how do I do this? Cause right. I live in a mortal body and this is what's hard with health because other certain experiences in your life, maybe you can walk away from, right. Or they happened 20 years ago when it's your body man, that's, you're living in that. And that's mm -hmm. with you every day. And, and that trauma and that fear around it mm -hmm. is with you every day. And we live in mortal bodies. So I also have to come to the truth of like, I'm going to have pain. Sometimes I'm going to mm -hmm. get sick. I'm going to have symptoms mm -hmm. and I, I want to live a long life. So I got to teach my body to not overreact, not just to get over this, but yeah. in the future, Right. Do not put so much strong meaning to every little symptom that I have because yeah. I'm going to feel it. So it's not just about changing it now, but really changing and healing those protective patterns. So it doesn't default back to it mm. in the future. It reminds me of like hypervigilance. Like if someone was like severely abused by a man, then they'll be very hypervigilant and like overread into everything and everything's a threat and everything's scary. And like, it's like that with the body, when your trauma was with the body, every little pain, every little, you know, sickness, every little, it's like, oh, like this, you blow it out of proportion Absolutely. because of trauma, like yeah. it's a natural response. And so a lot of, I'm hearing a lot of like self-soothing and like, what's the story here and relationship building and like changing mm -hmm. those thought patterns little by little. And that's what I was kind of wondering too, like, is most of, was most of your work like, um, like pausing, breathing, like rewriting the store, examining the subconscious stories that are coming up or were there like physical, you know, approaches that you did also in terms of like, I don't know, maybe like deeper breath work sessions or plant medicines or EMDR, you know what I mean? Like, was there, mm -hmm. how, what did your process mostly look like? Yeah. So it's a combination because if we're just going to pain, you have to do certain pain reprocessing therapies and mind training to help reestablish mm. that sense of trust and safety to where yeah. the brain doesn't overreact with pain because, and it's, it, and it takes a lot of diligent effort to do that because again, it's built into our nervous system. So right. the people who don't feel pain live short lives. So your brain is extra, <laughs> extra protective of letting that go. Right. And so right. it's, it's, you have pain, pain repro reprocessing, turning down that hypervigilance that also includes, of course, understanding what some of those deeply rooted experiences are that have made your brain stay yeah. there. Um, acknowledging all the emotions from that. Like I, I, when I went through my illness, I didn't allow myself to have a, a hard day. And if I did, I would, I would say, we don't have time for this. Like you got to right. survive. You got to fight. I mean, everything was taken from me. The love of my life was taken from me. I, I grew up so fast. You know, what do your teenage friends know what to do with you after three years? Like, glad you're not dying yet. I literally had a friend say that to me once. <laughs> you're still alive. But it's like, yeah, oh I am. Um, oh my and gosh. so I had a lot of emotions I had to sit with cry, right. unbelievable sorrow. Also the fear that yeah. drove me to fight, but I hadn't really felt, um, anger. Right. Cause right. I mean, gosh, you took everything like life took everything from me and just anger at the situation and, and things I was told. And right. I'm not an angry person, but gosh, we sure are going to feel all the yes. emotions if we live a life and yes. have experiences. Yes. So it was also processing that. So mm -hmm. it, it was a combination of mm. you have to get to hyper awareness, right. Uh, and uh, of observing all these pieces, but then you've got to sit with them. You've got to process them. They work in layers. As you know, we're like onions. And so mm -hmm. you have to be okay with the time mm -hmm. and the process to do that. And at the same time, I'm having to retrain my brain and my body to feel safe, to trust, to communicate in a different way. If people knew the amount of conversations I've had with my body, um, 
and still do sometimes. Um, I don't need to near as much, hardly ever, which is amazing. But but sometimes, like I went snowshoeing last week for the first time in my life. Um, oh, yeah. And my brain was like, what is this? This is new. We're wearing heavy things on our feet. That's requiring more of this hip, you know? And I, I know this is happening because it's new Yeah. and I can't erase what has happened. And I literally, without any of the friends I was with knowing, had to, for about a good 10 minutes, tell my brain, we're okay. Remember like the hip is strong now. We're not fragile anymore. Mm, I I know this. I know this is new but we're okay. Like you're safe to do this. We can I trust the hip. And it's amazing to feel your system start to clamp down, get tight, communicate pain to tell you, I'm not really feeling safe. Let's stop. And literally be able to talk it out of it. Yeah. You know? yeah and, and like comfort, comfort, let it know. I, I love this example. Cause like, I find that in, um, like with eating issues in my work, mm-hmm. right. It's like the, the most growth happens in the moment. You know, Mm -hmm. like we can talk about it right now on this coaching call, but like the growth happened, like that was the moment, right? Like Mm -hmm. that it's like in the moment is where the patterns are set. The the, the unconscious patterns, it's just, and you're just using the conscious mind to tell the subconscious mind it's okay. Right. And it's like, yeah, awesome. And I'm, it's, and you know what, what's cool about it is as complex as the brain is and it's also so, so simple. All it cares about is, is safety, safety and survival. So that's where I tell my clients, if, you know, obviously things get tailored specific to the person and the experiences and, and the, their stress response, whatever that is, but ultimately our brain and our body are seeking safety Mm -hmm. and, and, and just because they're both designed to protect us. Mm -hmm. And so when in doubt, whenever we can reassure safety, emotional safety, physical safety, mental safety, then that is always going to help to calm down the system. Right. And of course you mm-hmm. can absolutely, there's breath work to really take charge of our physiology to where the body is telling the brain it's safe, right? We have to, there's both that come into place. Cause if the body is also really not feeling safe and you're trying to tell it we're safe, it's like, um, I'm sorry. No, right. <laughs> like I, so we have to do breathing, which offloads that carbon dioxide buildup. So now the body is saying, oh, okay, maybe I am safe. And then the brain can take more conscious control, right? So there is definitely an interplay of having to both sometimes go to our physiology first with the body, with breathing, with movement, yeah, yeah. and then you know with the mind, because ultimately yeah. the brain is the command center, but you can't disregard that really powerful feedback from the body, right? Which is why if someone's having a panic attack and you're like, calm down, breathe (laughs) calmly. And they're like, and it makes them more anxious because they can't breathe calmly. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's some really cool tools like the physiological sigh and things that just really help the body to quickly offload that carbon dioxide. And then the mind has more power over it. So there's so many tools and possibilities. It's, It's just awesome. Yeah. I love that you're hitting body and mind, you know, a um, couple of things come to mind. One is I went similar to you, but in a different way, mine was more psychological, um, emotional stress, but like left a religion and got divorced within three months. So like a nuke on my life and then got into a really horrific relationship after that. And lo- after a year and a half lost everything, I was, it's like lower. Like I, I thought that was going to be the hardest thing I ever went through in my life. And then it was like, Nope, you're going to start all over again, you know? And Um, when I was, you know, going through the healing of that, like I did a lot of, you know, talk therapy type coaching work or whatever. And I felt like I was in a really great place. (laughs) Then I went to this workshop where they were doing like physical release. And I, I felt like I was like all good. Like, oh, I'm grateful for that experience. I learned so much from it. Like I, you know, wish him the best. Everything's good. Like, I hope that he finds his healing. Like I was in this Mm -hmm. little like that place. (laughs) And I'm watching these people at this workshop, like just pu- they're doing punching bags. And I'm watching this kid. A lot of people, this is like their first experience ever, like processing anything in their lives, right? And I'm watching this like maybe 19 year old kid, like who had been abused by his dad, just start punching this bag. And like as he gets more into it, I mean, he's just like punching so hard and saying every profanity, and just like falls to the floor sobbing. And I was like, oh my gosh, it was so, like, like 
beautiful and sad and all of the feelings, Mm -hmm. you know, to watch. And I was like watching him and I was like, I haven't done that. I didn't do that part. I didn't do that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And it was kind of embarrassing, honestly, because like a, a colleague had invited me to this thing. Right, right? Right. <laughs> I'm like, but I was like, I'm going to do it. And I did. And I cannot even, there are no words to describe the level of nervous system reset that mm-hmm. I felt for mm-hmm. days after mm-hmm. that. Like I almost couldn't even talk. I was just so calm so calm. And I was like, okay. So the physical, it was, that was my first big aha that it's like, it can't just, you can't just mindset your way. You know, the, the body also has to process and release, you know, it has to be both. So I love that you're doing both. Um, okay. I wanted to say guys, cause you're probably wondering like, so let's talk about bio emotional healing. And by the way, you guys can go to her website. We'll put the link. It's ashleydelello.com, but you know, like what is bioemotional healing? If somebody's like, I need this, <laughs> like, yeah. what, do you, what do you do with people? Yeah. So everything we just spoke about, right. In a, in a systematic process. Um, and that's, that's really what I realized I really needed to create was, was what, cause there's so much amazing tools out there so much, you know, and, and, and I love that we have access to so many things the rest of our life, right. Because they all have their place. And I was like, what is, what is though that, what is that process? How do you bring in the the brain rewiring, the retraining? How do you turn off that hypervigilance? How do you process the emotions? And then how do you create that trust and safety to where your brain and body actually accept these new beliefs, accept what you want to do? What is that process? And instead of trying to seek all these different things piece by piece, and maybe you're not ready for it, right? Because sometimes without laying a foundation beforehand, your system will reject sometimes, right? right? What you're trying to do. So right. that's what bioemotional healing is. It's it's a process. It's a nine week process that literally starts from scratch really. And it doesn't matter. My clients have, some of them have done stuff for 30 years, right? right. Some are new. It doesn't matter. It's, it's that process of taking all these pieces yeah. to truly partner with our system mm. in a way that both our brain and our body and both the neural pathways established and the emotions stored in the body and all the belief systems that have come from both healing them cohesively together, which I also love because aside from all the beautiful tools that are out there, this is now within my clients, right? They learn a process to truly partner with their system to heal these pieces, to let them go, and then to take control of their brain nervous system, but in a partnership that allows them to truly rewire pain, rewire anxiety, rewire limiting beliefs, rewire patterns of behavior. It's all the same, right? Because yeah. it's, it's all what's happening in the brain right. and the body, whatever that stress response is. And then right. to truly kind of become those creators of their life and live in that mm. proactive state yeah. versus constantly living in a reactive mm-hmm. and a survival state, really. Mm-hmm. I- mm-hmm. Wow. Re- respect. Cause all of us who have been on healing journeys, it's like, <laughs> let's take the most messy thing ever, <laughs> the most messy thing ever. And like really sit and think about a process. Like I know that took a lot. So like respect for creating that. And it's so powerful because you've been through it. So it's like, it gives you the wisdom of like, oh no, I wouldn't be ready for that at that point. Like we got to first like learn how to calm down physiologically. And then maybe we can talk about that, you know, and like with me with like meeting the ego, like if I push up on somebody's ego too hard and mindset coach is just like, whoop, okay, whoop, 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 we're not ready for that one. Yes, (laughs) absolutely. And that's why you're where you are and I'm where I am. Right. And I think everybody feels that way. I mean, you turn your pain into purpose Yeah. and I'm, I'm really grateful I was, I mean, the beautiful thing, right? Tony Robbins always say, you know, if you want the island, burn your boats, right? And um, Mm -hmm. that's the beautiful thing about being broken, right? Because in my life really depended upon me figuring this out, you know? So that was the greatest motivation (laughs) I could be given. Um, And in that, as, as unbelievably hard as it was, it was such a gift. And, you know, then every day looking at my daughter and and, and then my husband and like, what do I want for their life too with, with my life? And it, it was a journey and I was my own guinea pig 
but that's why it works because you could be the most brilliant neuroscientist. And I, I I've spoken in front of neuroscientists. I'm in fact speaking in front of 250 practitioners next week. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, and you could be, <clears throat> and you are, but if you haven't felt these types of things in your own system, in your own life, if you mm -hmm. haven't been in, you just won't get it and you won't get how, how complex it is and how mm -hmm. deeply it impacts you and all the vast ways right. it impacts you. And so therefore you're going to miss some really crucial pieces right. to the healing process. And so 100%. it really kind of is the only way, right. To connect all those pieces is to mm -hmm. have lived through them yeah. yourself. And that's what I tell people, right. I'm walking every day. I'm, I'm a miracle uh, to function, to walk, to be strong again, to be hiking, to be active. I, I spent three and a half years, barely walking, but just as meaningful to that is I live in a system that it feels calm. And it's not that yeah. we don't have spikes, right? Because I also live right. a busy life. But I remember telling my husband one day when we were watching a movie, and this is before my chronic pain journey. Like we were watching a movie and I'm like, you know what's so weird, right? Because I'm a dancer and I can stretch and I can do yoga and, you know, I can look really zen, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even laying here with you watching a movie. But I can feel this alarm yeah. system yeah, and it's running yeah. all the time. It doesn't matter how yep. much I breathe. Yep. It doesn't matter how calm I am. There's nothing happening here. We're watching a movie. I, I don't know what, I can't get this to turn off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and so equally miraculous to what, what I've defied physically is something nobody can see, but I can feel every day. Exactly. You know, exactly. and that is this system that mm -hmm. is in peace and is trust, even in my busy life, even if I get sick, right. Even if something happens and there's a lot of emotional stress happening in my life, like I can, it, it's yes. there. Absolutely. We want that survival mechanism, but I don't live there anymore. And that, yes. that is the piece that oh, you yeah. understand that is just, it's, it's miraculous. It's yes. significant. Cause then you get to live every day different. Yes. It's uh, I've lived through that too in complete and total survival mode. And I know exactly what you're talking about. And I live in that peace now. And it's like nothing, you're never safe when mm -hmm. your nervous system's in overdrive. Like it's, it's this chronic, like what's next, what's next, what's next? I gotta, it's just mm -hmm. like this, like, ah, uh, like on, you're just constantly on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I see this in so many people. It's like, oh, I hate relaxing. I hate, I, you know, and yes. I'm, like, I'm like, that's I a stress it. response. <laughs> I, get it. I know I've yeah. been there too, but like, we want to get to that place where it's like, yeah. I don't have to, it, it's, it's, it's kind of like a, the place I live now is like nothing as a have to anymore. It's like, I can't, but it's like, it's safe. It's just a, it's mm -hmm. a general feeling of safety and yeah. peace. And I want yeah. everybody to have that. And if you've had any sort of trauma, and you know what we're talking, I know, you know, what we're talking about, yeah. about that. Like, there's just something a little still on all the time. That's your yeah. nervous system. That's your nervous system on overdrive. And there's some stuff that needs to be worked through. And I, you can, I like perfectly described it. It's like, you got to feel that stuff. You got to feel it. It's it. I call this, um, baby toddler behind the baby gate. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hear me out. So like your daughter, right? Like if you have like a two-year-old or one-year-old or maybe like a 10 month old or something, you know, they can walk and they're behind a baby gate and you're like on the phone and you're working or whatever. And they're starting to be like, meh, meh, meh. you know, if you ignore them, what do they do? Louder. They get louder and louder and louder. And then they just start crying. And then finally you take a break and you like go over and you're like, get eye to eye. And you're like, well, Hey, what's up? And they're just want to tell you that they saw a bug or something. My listeners have probably heard that analogy before, <laughs> exactly. you know, they just want to yeah. be heard and seen yeah. and validated. Mm -hmm. And I feel like so much of this nervousness, it's like, we got, you got to feel those things you didn't want to feel. Yeah. And it's gonna, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. But, yeah, you know, it's, it's, I think that a lot of this is like, we're scared to feel big emotions, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but you can do things like you can use cold immersion. You can use breath work. You can, mm -hmm. you know, sit with a facilitator that can help co-regulate yeah. your nervous system with you, you know, like in all of the things that I'm sure you teach in your course, like you can, there are tools out there that will help you be, it be in a little bit safer space to be able to do that, you know? Yeah. So I'm sure that's and what you're 
thing is. I, I always say, you know, that's all our nervous systems are, right? They are, they're toddlers and, and <laughs> they're just screaming to get our attention. And if you can yeah. see that through that like compassionate lens, then absolutely. Then you can start to see it differently, right? Like you yeah. do see that toddler, but also you have everything to the brain comes down to meaning. And so I think all of us, no matter how you were raised, we were raised with a certain meaning around emotions, right? Yeah. Whether they were weakness or whether if we allowed them out, they would break us, we would get right. stuck there. And it's like, man, if we have that type of meaning, your brain's going to resist those. Mm -hmm. Or we attach who we are to our emotions. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, or people I'm, won't like you if you that's show right. those emotions right? or, yeah. or, you know, um, if, and if we have to first change that perception, like emotions are part of the human experience. We're not robots. If we're <laughs> going to experience relationships, challenges, we're going to have big emotions, but you don't mm -hmm. get to live a meaningful life without them. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we start, instead of being so afraid of them or seeing them as some big giant, and we can partner with them as, as some of our greatest teachers, right? Yeah. Of who we are, what matters to us, how we've been shaped. And yeah. we, we work through them with that meaning the brain now isn't so threatened by them, right? Which, which means we can allow them to move through them, not right. to get stuck there. That's what we all think, right? Oh, if right. I, I'm never coming out of it. And I'm like, well, yeah, if that's what you think, that's what's right. going to be the experience, right? right? So let's just stop being so afraid and stop identifying with them, right? Like me, I'm not an angry person, so I don't get to feel angry. Well, absolutely I do, right? You're going to feel them all. You're going to feel, feel them all. all. And that's not who I am, but it is part of my experience. Right, right. And it, it, you're making, for some reason, what's coming to mind is like, imagine if you never processed any of the food you've ever eaten or you never oh, yeah. processed any of the alcohol you ever drank. You'd be pretty messed up. <laughs> but like, pretty messed up. <laughs> when you don't process your emotions and they're yeah. stuck in there after so long, it's like, it's going to, it's going to cause problems, you know? And so it's so now it's like, I mean, I'm sure I, I have stuff that I haven't processed, but I, I, I look forward to it. You know, I, yeah. I'll drive around and I'm like, what, what am I feeling right now? And I'll try to identify it, you know? And I'm like, Oh, why are you feeling that? And it's so illuminating. It's actually your ally and your friend. It's mm -hmm. just, it's a, it's a teacher. It's just teaching you what's actually going on. And it's like this huge part of the human experience that we've been like not using well. Yeah, you know? absolutely. <laughs> you know, and it, it gives us contrast in life, yeah. right? You, when you've yeah. been broken and felt sorrow, you really feel joy, you know, and appreciation, right? Like to this day, I go to the grocery store because I couldn't do it for so long because I couldn't push a car. I couldn't load my groceries and I looked like I could, right? Um, but I couldn't. And to this day, like I'm always at the grocery store. It's so funny. And I have this thought in my mind, like, Look at me, guys. Like, is everybody seeing this? <laughs> like, that. are you seeing this? <laughs> like, I, you know, and yeah. you, it's, it sounds so nuts, good. but so because good. I felt that anger, yeah. frustration, loss, helplessness, right. like right. It, it's the contrast. And so totally. if we can see that it, we don't have to be afraid of them. In fact, like you said, we, we can, I mean, when they show up, we sit with them. We don't run from them. We don't suppress yeah. them. We learn from them and we're empowered right. by not just going through them, but what it means on the other side of them. It's true. Right? And when yeah. we can do that and when we can understand how the brain works and how to harness that capacity to help us instead of hurt us, and we do it in partnership, mm -hmm. gosh, we're all powerful. And that's really yeah. my message at the end of the day. Yes, I have this amazing two you know, inspiring stories, if you will. But I think too often we hear stories and we're like, oh, that's them, you know? And that's why yeah. I love the brain. Cause I'm like, no, that's you. Yeah. I just learned how to use it, how to harness it, how to work with the body, which means even if we're different, we have different intelligence, talents, gifts, backgrounds, personalities, you can achieve that same healing in your life. And you have that same capacity to become your best, most powerful self, whatever that looks like. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. You're just like, Hey, here's some stuff that really helped me. And it's like, it's been helping other people. So like, just try it out. And that's always, it's like, just try it out, just try it out, you know? Cause like you will 
fine bits and pieces of things that you just, it never occurred to you before. I, I feel, I know you experienced that in your coaching. I do too. Like sometimes I'm like talking to all my clients on a zoom call and I can see this, like look on their face. Like they're just like, what? Like, you know, yeah. like it, it never occurred to me to like, look at my body like that, or to look at food like that or like, what, you know? Yeah. And so it's so helpful to get the perspectives of people who have been through what you're going through and sharing some of that wisdom. So awesome, Ashley. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing. We'll make sure that we, um, you can follow her on Instagram also, but we'll link up ashleydelillo.com and um, everything that we talked about today. So yeah, thank absolutely. You so thank you for having me. Um, there's, there's a free training on the brain on my website, which is a great place. The more you understand kind of how the brain works, the more you can actually start to separate yourself from this is me. I'm broken. I'm stuck to, Oh, this is my brain doing this. And that gives you space to change. There's a free mind body blueprint there. That's a great place to just start. Okay. How do I start rewiring? That's a three-step process to help you take you out of that reactive to that proactive state. And then, yeah, if this resonates and people are like, I I need to do this work, you know, they can schedule a free consult um, just to first even see, okay, for me to better understand, to see where they're at and if it's a good fit. Awesome. Awesome. So zero, zero risk entry. Check out that free mind body blueprint. And yeah, I think we'll wrap it up there. Thank you, Ashley. 